we've got one more minute here to six o'clock, but we've got a little bit of an icebreaker question here. Have you ever completed anything on your bucket list? I'm, I was super interested to hear about yours, Johnny. What else did you have on that list? That was it. That was it? Yeah, it was not a very good list. <laughs> so become fluent in the second language. And become proficient. Lockpicking. And become. Last time, where, where those even came from. Oh, man, that's funny. <laughs> Does anybody else have a bucket list item that you checked I, off? I don't even have a list. No. <laughs> that's so, that's that so far time. off. Yeah. Or tomorrow. Oh. Welcome, Lori. Welcome. What else? Wait, w -A -E -L. W -A -E -L. Boy, are you saying you have to be more experienced in life before you start a bucket list? I've just got so much time <laughs> or no time left at all, so I don't worry about it. <laughs> I just do stuff, you know? All right. There's definitely an irony. What about anybody online? Uh, we've got the chat up here um in the meeting room so we can see and interact with you guys do you guys have any bucket list items that you've been able to complete i know that for me it was ne i never actually had a bucket list probably for the same reasons that foy mentions <laughs> but the one thing i didn't realize was on there was being a college mascot oh and yeah, I was I was the college mascot of Saginaw Valley State University for two years. I oh. can see that. You, you've got mascot energy. You were the cardinal. Huh? I was the cardinal. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I was the very first one to wear their current suit. Oh, really? So I'm, I'm like one of the only people that got to wear the old one and the new one. I was about to say, did you get to like dodge wearing the really old musty one? No, you got both. You did both. No, but I did get to be the cardinal for long enough to appreciate how nice the new one was <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you that's a pretty wild um that's a pretty wild adventure because there's like an ice vest that they give you to keep you cool and it just oh, really? has these huge packs of ice that you slip into like a jacket oh, oh. oh. really interesting insider knowledge mm -hmm. it was fun yeah welcome from barcelona that's awesome man that's well, super cool. What's the time there right now? Is it 11 o'clock at night? Midnight. Midnight. What are you doing Six here? Six hours. Six hours. <laughs> Working on his bucket list. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm no one to talk. At midnight for me, I'm probably <laughs> up doing something, right? Mm -hmm. That's true. Me too, sleepy. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, well, awesome. I'm glad to have you. Glad to have everybody. Um, any other bucket list things? I have something really, really kind of dumb, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> I lived in Orlando when I was growing up, and our senior prom was at the Swan Hotel on the Disney property. Oh. And I don't know why I thought this was like the most beautiful hotel I'd ever seen. And I always wanted to stay at that hotel. And I did last year. Oh, <laughs> oh fantastic. All right. Did it, okay. did it live up to expectations? <coughs> was the room just fabulous? It, it, it was really nice. It yeah. was really nice. It had this beautiful pool that shaped like a grotto. And, mm. and it, I used to see it all the time because when you go to Disney, it was one of the transfer points to transfer between different parks if you didn't want to use the monorail. And they would have like proms and stuff there. And like, so it was just really exciting. I got to stay at the hotel. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I want to stay at one of those hotels that has like a hot tub inside of it. And you get into the hot tub in the room and then you go through a tunnel and then you're outside yeah. in the hot tub and all you see is like mountains. Uh, mm. wow. That'd be super cool. And also to swim with a whale shark. And whoever thought about a bucket list until the movie came out. I, you know, I've heard rumors that that is where the term came from. Mm. Was that movie? Like it didn't exist before that? I don't know. It Never existed. thought about it. I don't, I don't think that. Did it? Okay. 
Like, yeah, when did that movie, movie come out? Yeah. I think I existed before that. Hey guys, we're gonna take a quick picture here. Yeah, because we always forget to take a picture. We always forget to take one. And so everybody online, see how these events are go doing. ahead and smile. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I got it. I always nice. love being on the edge of those photos because cool. then it stretches you out even more. Like I'm not wide enough already. I get even wider. <laughs> Northern California. Northern California. Whenever I hear Northern California, I always think of Sacramento and then like the Redwood National Forest. That's in my head, that's all Northern California. But is that else? is that on your bucket list? Oh yeah, like, I mean honestly, like every location around the world, even the most dangerous places, are on my bucket list. Because I just want to go see it, check it out for myself. Where but, in Iowa is Shannon? Yeah, Shannon, where are you at in Iowa? I'm all waiting for Shannon. So on my bucket list, being able to Des Moines. go Des Moines. to okay. smack in the middle. Oh. Nice. Not far away from Sean, I think. No. Right? Nice. Okay. Cool. Are you in Ames, Iowa? Right? My parents used to live in Dubuque. Dubuque? Mm -hmm. Iowa? Yeah. Huh. My son's in Sioux City, Iowa. So drive across the whole damn state <laughs> to get there. <laughs> That's how I know Des Moines is about in the middle. Caitlin <laughs> <laughs> Clark, Clark County. County. Country, oh. Yes, definitely. She was <laughs> West Des Moines, wasn't she? Or just Des Moines? I think it's just West Des Moines. Or no, sorry, just regular Des Moines. No, I mean well, I meant Caitlin Clark. Doesn't matter. Oh, oh, we digress. Oh. If I knew I'm that totally read that as county. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> wow, okay. Awesome. So now are you in Des Moines or are you in Iowa City? Caitlin Clark was in Iowa City, was she? Are you telling me that? <laughs> Oh, I have okay. a feeling that all of Iowa is claiming Caitlin Clark <laughs> right now, right? I don't who is who is Caitlin Clark? I knew that was something. Oh, Tyler! Can you believe they say that, Shannon? Who is Caitlin Clark? <laughs> okay, Shannon. It's all right, Tyler. I didn't know this. either. Did you Google her? No, I've been watching her play basketball since she was oh, a freshman. Basketball. Oh, oh, I think oh. she deserves to have all of Iowa playing her. She does. I was searching Apple Music because it sounded like a singer. No. Oh. <laughs> no. If, you ever, if you've ever watched a State Farm commercial, she's not going to be a singer. Yeah, she she was on uh, SNL. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. yeah she was. because uh, Che makes a whole bunch of misogynistic jokes. And oh, he, man. He, he went on there and he made her tell a bunch of jokes. Caitlin says, if I could come off mute, you guys would get it. <laughs> oh, man. Shannon, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Have you ever watched her play in person? Mm. I have three times. Have twice. you really? Yeah. Twice in Ann Arbor and once here in Michigan State. Oh. Because my one of my friends went to college with her dad, and they're still friends. Wow. In a small world, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. Really small. that's, a separation. that's, that's right. the only reason I've watched her play for four years. It's because of my friend's friend, who is Caitlin's dad. Uh, wow. That is crazy. Super interesting. <laughs> I'm curious of Shannon's answer. <laughs> but then we really should get I want to know why she can't come off mute. <laughs> I mean, in Iowa, so you're really off the clock. Okay? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's 10 after 5. <laughs> and unless the words you're going to say in your house, you don't use those. <laughs> Uh, that's okay, old. I better shut my pie hole. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so you guys are now in a session about leveling up your JQL skills. Uh, my name is Tyler Kosowski. I'm an Atlassian consultant um, by day and night. Um, and I'm also a Lansing community co-leader with Sam and Erica here. Um that's what you do at night, is what you were I, saying? Yeah, mm -hmm. I do that at night. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so this is kind of what we're going to be talking about. Um, and really digging deep into JQL, I'm going to start off by giving a quick refresher, you know, talking about um, kind of the generic structure of JQL, how it's used. Um, 
And then we're going to start kind of small, right? Gaining a little bit of experience, um, talking about what some base level skills are that are going to allow you to start building a stronger JQL foundation so that you can move on to some of the advanced stuff. All right. So then we'll move, be moving into leveling up, really exploring the aspects of JQL that you might not be aware of or that you might be aware of that um, you can go even further with, right? And then finally, we're going to start talking about, okay, we've talked about these things. These are some aspects of JQL that I might not, might not be using or that I could get a little bit stronger in. And then we're going to talk about where you're going to be able to apply these new skills um, moving forward. So apparently all of my images are broken, which is very interesting. Um, give me one second here. See if I can fix this. Just some, they're all there. Oh, I thought that was intentional. Like you were gonna actually like write the content out as you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'd love to. Yeah. I thought it was weird that my face didn't show up on that on that first screen. Oh, look, okay. Now they're showing again. Did right. you have to get permission? Well, I didn't have to do anything hmm. besides restart. That's how you fix 90% of the problems in the world today, right? Just restart things. <laughs> turn it off and turn it back on again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, and we're back. <laughs> back to the agenda. There we go. Okay. So throughout the presentation, I'm going to be using Menti. Um, and in fact, I will drop the link in the chat here. For those at home, if you want to use it on your computer, there's the invite link that you can join in on. Um, and I'm going to be going back and forth between the presentation and some Menti questions. And essentially what Menti is, is you go ahead and scan this code or you, you can go to the website. And then from there, I'll be able to ask you guys like polling questions. And you'll be able to anonymously answer um, just so we can get some interaction going inside of the presentation. So I'm just going to wait just another second while we have some QR coders grabbing that. All right, so if we go over to the Menti, here's that QR code again. We've got some likers already, let's go. All right, so our first Menti question, and you have to let me know if it's, it's working properly. Um, how often do you use JQL? <laughs> Daily, <laughs> weekly, monthly? Oh no, the options go away after somebody starts. Oh, oops. Um, and then what's JQL and am I at the wrong event? I think are the options. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm very curious what kind of users we have. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to gauge here is like, all right, how often are you um, using JQL? So <laughs> no worries. No worries. Jumping the gun there. Well, um, so it looks like a lot of you are pretty pretty strong users. I'm curious if anybody wants to speak up who is just the, the monthly user. I'm trying to get a, a gauge of how specific I should be when I'm going through some of the basics and stuff like that. That might be me because it let me pick three choices. Oh, no. <laughs> it I said I had two choices left, so I went and cho chose all of them. I oh, should boy. mention this is my first experience with Menti. So... The one thing I did learn is don't let people do comments on Menti, oh, <laughs> anonymous yeah. comments. But uh, it seems like I have some other lessons to learn here. <laughs> like, don't You're welcome. Let a QA yeah. For you. <laughs> yeah, I think the lesson I just learned was don't let Foy use Menti. Oh, that's so <laughs> true. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So that's awesome. Um, it sounds like a lot of you guys are pretty frequent users. So for much of this, I'm gonna to get to the kind of speed on through, right? So as a refresher, the general JQL structure is essentially made up of your fields, which is the information that you are um, trying to get. Your operators is how you're trying to get that information. Your values, which is um, whatever your conditional value is, and you'll, you'll see these in more detail here in a second. Um, and of course, keywords to start combining your different expressions together. 
what does that structure look like exactly? And where are all these pieces? So this is what it looks like um, in a very basic idea. Now, it, just in case there is anybody that ended up in the wrong event today, um, JQL allows you to search through Jira query, excuse me, Jira issues. Um, the structure is quite similar to SQL, um, but the one main difference that I recently read, in fact, while I was kind of digging up this JQL structure, the biggest differences between SQL and JQL really is that SQL really tries to get data out of an uh, out of a database, whereas JQL is really focused around these issues, and it's not meant to be some reporting tool. It's not exactly supposed to be used for getting very specific information. It's meant to build out your lists and build generic reports, right? Mm -hmm. Not at a really low level. And for anyone who uses SQL frequently, JQL does not have a select statement. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and that's kind of like the basis of that that same statement too, mm -hmm. is you can't really select all the way down the way that you would. So I, I would reckon the equivalent of select in Jira land would be selecting which columns you want to appear in the results list, mm -hmm. right? Right, so. but in SQL, there's also like other functions you can perform in there. Like if I wanted a list of distinct issues or a list oh, of yeah. distinct usernames, mm, for right. instance, I yeah. can't do that with JQL. Yeah. And, and um, yes, yeah, so if you're looking on focusing specific fields, you definitely can get very accurate. And I actually have an example of that later um, when looking at automations, because then you can start combining your JQL with smart values um, that we'll talk about later on. So you're, you're definitely right there. And JQL can only filter, SQL can compute and give results. Yeah, that is that is a much better way to say what I rambled through. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so out of curiosity, is there anybody that doesn't know how to write a JQL statement? We're all pretty familiar. Okay. Sounds good. So here's something that's a little bit more on the complex side, right? And starting to see how these structures can fit together. So we have the original expression that we're looking at. Um, and you kind of see on the other side of our keyword, and in this case, you can also use or, for example. Uh, and then you also have a secondary expression here that can technically be separate, joined by one of the keywords. Um, and of course, there's lots of other things that you can kind of do to this structure. Right, that we'll talk about moving forward. <laughs> All right, so we have a very base level understanding of what we're talking about here. So let's start, start getting a little bit of XP. So let's go ahead and go back to the Menti. Um, I don't know what the timeout is on this or if you might have closed out of it, so I'll just take a second here for you to go ahead and jump back in, grab that QR code if you need to. And it's always in the chat if you're a little bit behind. All right, so our next question, we're gonna get a little bit more technical. So looking at this JQL without any context, um, what kind of results are you gonna be getting from it? Are you gonna get the correct result? Are you gonna get the incorrect result? Are you gonna get an invalid JQL or is it just unknown? How do we determine correct versus incorrect? Right. So I'm looking for, um, yeah, that's, <laughs> I'm looking for all the issues types for that are, <laughs> excuse me, we're looking for all the bugs and stories inside of the mobile project. Oh, okay. I may or may not have made this mistake before. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't. <laughs> I don't think it would be human if we all had a mistake. Um, and so here's what I'll say is the correct answer would be unknown, right? Before Sam asked me to give the context. Oh, oops. Yeah, no, that's okay. Okay. Because that is exactly the correct question here is um, what am I looking for? 
I'm glad that nobody said correct, which is cool because looking at this, I definitely wouldn't say that. Um, and the main reason, of course, is oh, is how that and is structured. So at the top, we have what we were looking at before. So project e equals MOBL and issue type equals bug or issue type equals story. So what you would really get from this is all of the issue types that are bug inside of the project MOBL. Pause, and then also any stories across any projects. Um, and I'm actually coming from a developer background. So one of the key things I think about is how can I break these things down using parentheses? Now, in this case, it's absolutely necessary that you do do this. Um, but also these parentheses can help you build out much more complex expressions. Um, it allows you to group your expressions together, like in this case. Um, and also this allows you to start building them one at a time, right? So I can even take out that issue or, or um, excuse me, the bug or story piece and pull it out separately and see this is what I'm going to get. And now I need to filter it down a little bit further by using potentially this project equals M-O-B-L, right? Makes sense. Any questions on parentheses? And actually, I have a much more complex example later that I'll share with you on um, why these parentheses can definitely become uh, a benefit to you if you start building something more complex. Makes sense. Huh? I, I'm actually curious to hear your story, Erica. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> story so like, time with Erica. Yeah, it, story it, time with Erica. <laughs> for those online, if you have any um, anecdotes, if you have any anecdotes or JQL queries that you accidentally dropped um, or did something like this, and were like, this is not what I'm looking for. <laughs> well, I always start mine with the project equals because, you know, that's pretty much your base parameter for a query, at least in the, the JIRA instance that I'm using, mm -hmm. because we have so many projects that like you're going to get too much if you don't put the project filter on there. Um, but we had, I was making a board filter and we had recently combined two teams and rather than go through and do a bulk change and change all of the issues to have the one team name on it. I actually just redid the query, except that I forgot my parentheses oh. and started pulling in a whole bunch of stuff onto the board that had nothing to do with us. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that's funny, too, because usually when I'm thinking about JQL, I'm thinking what reports would look terrible. But then when you're looking at a board, you're going, where is all this stuff coming from? <laughs> it's like, what is all of this here? <laughs> well, because I just had somebody ask me today, and it's like, oh, there's no way to filter a board without, except by team, right? And I'm like, what are you talking about? You totally can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and, and I know that partially because I made this exact mistake. Oh man! Because <laughs> um, it it it, evalu it 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 almost reminds me of those math problems that you see on like the memes where they keep asking people how much is you know what what is the answer to this and everybody starts disagreeing. It's because this is the same problem that you're having with this mm -hmm. is that it's evaluating each of these linearly. Yeah. And, and so without a significant grouping, it doesn't understand what you're actually looking for. So like you said, it was doing project MOBL and issue type bug. Then it was evaluating the or story type without referring back to the project. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, exactly. Which is a way to mess up your board. Just warning <laughs> you. Um, I... We have a chat here. Anything related with time? The last 30 days took me a couple of days to wrap my head around. <laughs> oh, 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 so did you have to change it to like the last 32 days <laughs> by the time? I still haven't wrapped my head around the time values yet. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to hear you say that because we're going to talk about that today. Oh, good. <laughs> awesome. All right, so um, another 
pretty straightforward thing to use. Um, I know this is probably one that a lot of people already know about and are using, but just as a reminder, just in case somebody out there is like, I am actually building out and saying every single test project or <laughs> every single project equals in this structure, there is an in versus and a not in um, operator that you can use to simplify this expression simply by saying project in and then creating a list. Um, and this is actually a really interesting way to start building out some um, some almost variable-like behavior going forward that we'll talk about in a second here. Um, but it allows you to start building out these lists. It saves you a lot of time. In this example, it's not that big a deal, but this could be 30 or 40 projects that you're pulling from. Would that first line actually work? Wouldn't it be project equals or project equals, not project and project? You were absolutely right. <clears throat> That would be broken. Yeah, because it cannot nice. be. I I appreciate oh, that. Yeah. That yeah. was actually a have test. To get an or. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Secret that. test. I, 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 I answered unknown because I didn't know the answer, and then I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll tell you, I love the in expressions for statuses. In yes, in excess yes. Definitely use it for statuses. Um. I see it a lot for users. Mm. If you have a group of users, which isn't necessarily a, a good idea because then you can just use groups. But if you don't ha have admin privileges. Mm -hmm. So, um, and all, along the same lines, if you have, okay, so this one is correct though. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so if you're looking to exclude projects, in a very similar vein, you can use a not in instead. So as long as it's not in the OTH project and it's not in the AFT project, you can exclude them. So pretty simple, but a good way to start building up some of your experience. Um, another simple one that I think a lot of people probably are already know is the contains operator, which is that adorable little squiggly line. It's called a tilde. <laughs> So thank you. Thank you. Um, and this is actually coming from a very real situation that I ran into. Um, we had a client that I was working with, and what they were looking for was to build out reporting based on particular kinds of issues that they were running into. Um, and this was before we had like extended request types. They didn't have any fields that they were tracking this information in. And they're like, we want information about any time somebody had an incident with a printer. So what we did is built a report using this contains operator looking for the word print, right? So it would be in the description or the, the summaries where we ended up doing it. Um, so we actually built a not so trustworthy um, report based around the contains operator and mm -hmm. they they loved it and like going through it was decently accurate because our users were using the word print so I will tell you something I learned though it won't find anything that's been archived as oh, okay that's interesting so can you find any Jira issues that have been archived no no so if something's but I had a PO that was looking for some things as part of a platform migration. And so he was trying to look back at, he was using the contain saying, can I find all of the ones that contain this, you know, uh, I think it was a program name or something. And um, he came back to me, he's like, I know there are more than this. Why can't I find them? Well, it turns out it was because the admins had actually archived those particular issues because they were more than three years old. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just kind of to give everybody a heads up, it's not going to find anything that's been archived. Right, right. And we have a chat. True, it's considered as a delete from the database, which makes sense that they would not show anywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Although it's like ironic, because what I run into is like, we want to archive this, but also we want to look at it sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. like a... <laughs> That's exactly where we were. <laughs> <laughs> so, is the tilde the contains only in in, in uh, you can't use that in basic. 
There's not, you can't, there's not, it used to be in server, there was a field you're doing basic where it let you put in what you're looking for. I don't know that the cloud has that. Off the top of my head, I actually don't know. Um, when you say basic, you're talking about the basic server. Thing. Server as opposed to cloud is what I should oh, say. Oh, oh, okay. But basic search, I think he means. Yeah, That's basic, I mean, yeah. Basic, yes, right. Okay. The version that we're using, the basic search doesn't let, it has drop downs. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. So but, it would let you use the contains only if you had that as a drop down for a text field. Like but I almost never use that because I find that it's a lot easier for me to just type the JQL than it is for me to try to to muck around with what what they allow me to pick from in the drop down boxes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think you can, but it's you might have to be in the advanced search pane to actually do it because you'd have to type it in. You wouldn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it recognizes when it is a text field. So it gives you the option of picking contains as your operator. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, use basic as long as you're only using your predefined fields. Otherwise, use JQL. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I actually I found that I prefer JQL anyway because I've gotten proficient enough at it that it really doesn't matter. Like, yeah, if it's really basic. Okay, sure, basic. If I just need like one status, boom, boom, that's fine. But yeah. I default to the advanced view, so <laughs> like I'd actually have to switch. I feel yeah. like that's how you live your life. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Yeah, something I've noticed when I'm like helping people get used to JQL is I'll typically start them off on the basic view just to get comfortable with it. But it honestly does not take them long before they switch over to advanced. Like it's it's weird. It's it's a quicker transition than I would think if you had a similar situation in other systems. So. Even for less technical people too. Yeah, that's exactly. what that's what always impresses me. Yeah. It's like you've never written a, a query in your life, and here you are writing JQL statements. That's awesome. I'll give it Lassie and credit. Like the 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 type ahead suggestions as you're typing inside that box, I think helps a lot because it auto suggests whether it's a field or an operator or mm -hmm. a value. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I will Very say though, that when it auto completes, it likes to eat the next part of your your statement if you're doing it in the middle. <laughs> it, oh, yeah. You, know, you always yeah. eat the order on the order by, and I'm like, stop it. <laughs> that tells me that you wrote your JQL wrong, and you're just yeah. like, no, it was there before. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I think this was your fault. <laughs> I found having an extra space between them actually helps it stop stop it from doing that. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it defaults with the space, and like when you're already working with it and you've ordered it, and then you're like I'm just gonna change <laughs> this one <laughs> oh, thing yeah. over here. <laughs> Double space it to avoid Pac-Man JQ. Oh. <laughs> exactly. I, I think it's less I, keystrokes to just get the order buy back. You know, know, he's pretty sharp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bunch of comments going on. Yeah. I'm going to say I just learned something. So thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> the double space, I'm going to use that it is, every I, day. I'm just not used to doing double space because then I'll get a period. Have you ever noticed mm -hmm. that? Like when you're typing in Word or yes. even on your phone, you hit double right. you hit space twice, mm -hmm. automatic uh, period. So. Huh. Periods don't work in JQL, so I can't imagine that happening. <laughs> Cool. Awesome. Cool. All right. So we brought up dates earlier. So dates, it depends on what you're doing. Um, but I would definitely recommend using dates. You get more focused results. So say you have 20,000 stories inside of your project. Um, using dates is going to allow you to slim that down. It's going to end up being more performant. Um, it's going to be able to it's going to allow you to really focus in on the issues you even care about. I don't care about issues that happened three years ago. Um, issues th three years ago have been archived, um, so that doesn't matter. So really focusing in on the sections you care about is going to be important there. Um, and it also helps you avoid some automation JQL limits. When you're running automations, and we'll, we can talk about this and I'll potentially show you later if we have some time, um, you can actually only run automation on a thousand issues at a time. So if you're trying to run on every single story that's ever been created inside of your automation, it's not going to work. 
um, it'll actually get throttled once it hits that thousand, and it'll take one and a half minutes to do it. <laughs> so your automation is locked up for a minute and a half while it's doing work on issues you probably don't care about. So if we're looking at this created JQL, I actually have a little bit of a, an exercise here. Here's the mentee again, if anybody needs the QRL. All right. Oh. All right. And the next question What does the JQL that we just looked at return? Is it the issues created five or more days ago? Issues that were created in the last five days? Issues without a created date? Or no issues? Curious if we can get this one. I would say the first one, five or more. You'd say the first one? Mm -hmm. Maybe wrong, but. There's no <laughs> unknown option here. <laughs> awesome. All right. So the answer is issues created in the last five days. Mm -hmm. Now, I know it looks kind of wild. Um, so to talk you through this a little bit, the created. <laughs> Um, see if I can remember this. <laughs> I know that this is the answer because I ran it. <laughs> so the created is greater than negative five days ago or negative five days. So that negative five means it's in the past mm -hmm. as in five days ago. Mm -hmm. And then since the created is greater than on this side, greater than negative five days. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. And and the really interesting thing here, I, I'd never tried this before, but if you remove that negative in front of the five, it'll try to run, but it means if it's been created more than five days in the future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so going back to your uh, comment a little while ago, what else? You'll actually just be able to say if it's created within the last 30 days, you can just say negative 30D, um, and it would look like this. Yeah, it'll, it'll give empty results without the minus. And the, uh, the Pac-Man is trying to get created this time. <laughs> One thing I like to do every time I see like the greater than, I re in my head I replace that with the word within, and then if I see like a less than, then I'll replace that with like the word um, older than. Well, older than. So what happens if you just do <laughs> created equals minus five d? It would be exactly five days ago that it was created. Okay. Like the syntax is very weird to me. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I think I feel the same way, um, and I've been a developer for over eight years, and I've been writing JQL for over a year, well, <laughs> three years, um, and I still don't get it. <laughs> You're running JQL for greater than or equals negative three <laughs> way. <laughs> oh, snap. Yes. There we go. All yes. right, there we go. <laughs> Someone's now. thinking. I like it. I love it. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, so we've got some of the more basic things out of the way here. Um, hopefully, you're, you feel like you're starting to gain some experience. You've got some level ups happening. Um, so let's keep leveling up. This is one of my favorite things that I've learned in the last two months. You can actually build filters, and then you can use those filters inside of your other filters, which instantly made me think of this meme, so I had to make it. Yo, dog, I heard you like filters, so I got you filters for your filter while you filter. <laughs> <laughs> so what does this actually look like? Now, imagine that we have a filter um, that's called Mobile Bugs and Stories. So when we were <laughs> – here comes the juice. Here it is, man. Um, so 
when we were looking before at the mobile bugs and story problem that we started off with looking at the parentheses, we'll imagine that that's what our filter is. So you can actually use this filter name to also begin adding onto the filter. So that brings us back to kind of getting um, variables built inside of your filters, if you will, right? I'll, I'll use the word variable in a very loose term. But essentially, this is something that's going to be, re be reusable. So if you had a particular set of filters that, uh, or excuse me, if you had a particular set of projects that you were working in, say there's five projects that I always want information from, you could build a very basic level filter, and then you can add on any additional um, expressions that you need. In this case, I used where the priority is also greater than medium, right? So this would be like, a high priority filter on my mobile bugs and stories um, that a developer might use and say, hey, something just came up, I got this filter. Um, and then you could also save this one and potentially send yourself a subscription and say, if this filter has any issues that are high priority, send me an email and you know to get right on. Um, if you wanna slim this up a little bit, you can also use this filter ID right here uh, that you can pull out of the URL. I'm not sure if there's any other way to get that ID. Um, oh, I, I know a way. Is there a way? It's <laughs> the long way, but you can do it. If you type in filter equals and then type the name of it and hit the enter, it will automatically default to telling you what that number is. Oh. It'll, it'll, it'll change your query from this, th this text to the number. It does the same thing with sprint numbers. It does the same thing with numbers, yeah. um, team names, things like that. Mm -hmm. So if if you're ever like, I sometimes I have a team that I bulk create issues for every sprint. <laughs> and so I go in, I get, I create the sprint and I get the sprint number by going in there and typing in sprint <laughs> equals and starting to type the words and then let it auto fill the number for me. <laughs> okay, okay. So we have a question. If the filter you're using as part of the new JQL, do you still need to give users view to the original filter or just give them view permissions to the new JQL filter? Good question. Ooh, good that question. is a really good question. Yeah, is it, does it check permissions for using it as an operator? I do not know the answer to that. I'll go, I'll go find out. Yeah. Thank you. That's interesting to me, and I wonder if it. I, I hope not, because I think that you would have to, because otherwise you could jump the permission. Yeah, that would be my hunch too. But yeah, yeah, yeah. let's try it. Let's figure it out. Yeah, please. I, I would do it live, but I think that would take a little bit too much uh, setup for the amount of time we have left, unfortunately. So yeah, great question. Definitely something to be aware of, probably. I guess I'll need somebody's help for this. So maybe I won't yeah, he's already, it right now. Jonathan's already graduated, so talk to him. Oh, All right. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing either. <laughs> That's just a piece of paper I have and a plaque on the wall. It means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the most expensive piece of paper I've ever bought. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the, the next thing I want to talk about is using users and groups. Um, now, I have a little note down here on the bottom, just because I like to remind people about this when talking about using users inside of your filter queries. Um, user IDs have to be used. If you try to use the name, you might not get anything. Um, in fact, it might return blank now. I'm not sure. Um, but you want to make sure you're using those user IDs. That doesn't directly apply with the function that I'm talking about here which is members of. Now, if you wanted to find all issues that are reported by somebody that are not inside of your staff, for example, and you already knew that you had a group called KLNA staff, that's the company I work for is Coonsley and Associates, um, and we might have that staff group, right? So I, I want to say, all right, all everybody else is not inside of our staff. That's on our instance. If they've reported on things inside of the mobile project, we want to make sure we know about them. These are the things that clients care about. You can use this members of function. Now, um, 
the caveat behind this members of function is that it does not allow you to use roles, unfortunately. However, there are some um, JQL marketplace applications that will let you do uh, members of roles. So if that's a functionality that you want or need, you can do that. Um, why they don't have it already directly inside of Jira JQL, I have no idea. It seems like it would be absolutely right for the picking because typically the issues with this, of course, are going to be that your users actually don't know who are in these groups. Um, and you need an admin to build out these groups in the first place. So this is kind of a more niche use thing, but it could definitely bring you a lot of value. <laughs> Sam, were you able to find an answer on the... Yeah, I was just testing this out. So, yeah, you do need to have a few permissions to the, the original filter. filter if you want to be able to use it or see the results in a new filter. Gotcha. So, okay. Yeah, but I sent... not necess... yeah, go ahead, boy. Oh, I sent you uh, a filter that you have access to the project. You don't. You no longer have access to the original filter, but you do have access to the new one. So I can always see what you get when you do it later. Okay. Because I'm curious to see it actually prove out. I'm very well, excited to use that functionality at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I just oh, yeah. learned it here yeah. today. That is handy. And as long as you are giving the correct permissions to your variable filters, as I, I called them earlier, um, it shouldn't be a, that big of a deal. Right? Hopefully you don't go too crazy in your Five filters deep. It's like how far back do I'm gonna, have to go to so get permission? I will. I'm gonna go nest it until it. <laughs> and I'm gonna nest it until it bombs on me. Then I'm gonna call <laughs> Sam. Go, Sam. It broke. Oh man, it's a good question though. I never thought about that in that way before. Mm -hmm. so, anyway, you don't make dashboards all the time. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> 1-800-CALL-SAM. Oh, man. There's billboards <laughs> in Michigan for a law firm, and that's the phone number for those yeah. of you outside of Michigan. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Um, another keyword – actually, excuse me. This is an operator. Another operator that's really that's awesome is the <laughs> is the, the was operator. So this particular – JQL will tell you all issues that are inside of the test project and was at any point inside of the in progress status. Um, actually, this would break because I, I forgot my I forgot my I forgot my quote over here. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, no. The J the JQL Pac Man ate it. Yeah, the JQL <laughs> Pac Man ate it. Yes, ate my quotes. <sighs> um, so. How else can you use this? You can actually extend the functionality by quite a bit uh, because I don't really care if the status has ever been in progress. Like I might, um, but what if I wanted to do something within a period of time? Like you're running a sprint, for example. Um, it's a two-week sprint, but I want to say, hey, I want to take a look and see what's been moved into in progress in the second half of the sprint. I want to extend my reporting functionality around this sprint. Um, you can add this during keyword to this, or I think it's technically an operator. The, the during operator with this was so that it'll only be if that status was in progress from uh, – actually, this is the same day – from the 5th of May <laughs> – the 8th of May to the 8th of May. Of course, you can customize this range however you need to. You'll definitely use this one. Nice. I'm glad. This is this is one that I often forget about, um, but it could definitely really be really useful, especially when you're looking at a point in time of your of your issues. And one that really goes right along with that was operator is the changed operator. So you can actually detect what is if it's just been changed. So you can actually get a little bit more simpl simplistic with this and say status changed. And then it would return any issues that have ever changed. Uh, but in this example, 
I add a from and to to it, and that allows me to check and see what issues have statuses that have changed from in progress to opened at any point in this case. And then again, just like we're looking at the was from before, you can also add in the during operator here to make sure that you're only checking for when statuses have changed from open to in progress during this um, time period. So this one's really handy too. So you can kind of start building reports and filters and stuff around um, what's going on with your issues or what's changing on your issues. All right, so we've got another Menti here. Got the QR code up. All right, so we're all done leveling up. I've given you all the experience that I can at this point. I'm curious for some feedback here. Which one of these JQL features that we just talked about would you be most likely to use? Now, I think it's a it's a ranking yeah. thing, so you get to rank which ones might be the most used by you. Super interested to find out. You mean going forward or including things that I'm already using? Let's let's say both. Yeah. <laughs> How is the interface? Is it pretty easy to just yeah, write? Yeah, this is cool. It's slick. Okay. You can just tap them, actually. Oh. oh, really? Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Just tap the order. Oh, poor members of. Oh, yay. <laughs> Somebody Those are did. sympathy votes. <laughs> boy, did that, didn't you, boy? <laughs> oh, mine's already in. I had, I had no sympathy. <laughs> Wow, actually looking at these results coming in, I don't know how to tell. Oh, okay, so five people, that's all of us. So looking at this, this is really exciting to see that um, what you'll be using. The filters and filters at the very top I think is surprising. I think it's super useful, um, and especially for something that I recently figured out. I've used it a couple of times, and I'm definitely looking forward to using it some more. So the – Members of being right there at the bottom. That does not surprise me at all, just because you do have to be like at the Jira level admin to control those groups and stuff. Um, so if you're able to go with your admins and set up groups that make sense, um, that's really handy, but it's not always super relevant. Um, I was recently at the Atlassian team conference, and one of the things they talked about a lot was building Atlassian teams inside of the software so you can track like who's working on projects and things like that. Something I would love to see in JQL is being able to use that members of function to search JQL by team members. I think that would be super cool. So awesome, thank you for your feedback there. My team member wasn't, would that be that much different than assigned? So you can build full teams of people. Mm -hmm. um, so like me and Sam would be on the Atlassian team. Mm -hmm. um, and then you could compare that to like a signee, for example. Okay. <clears throat> yep. All right. So the hot topic of the last two years, AI, right? <laughs> it's all what we just learned about JQL useless. What, what, I'm curious what you guys think. No. No? I don't, I don't think, think it's so. useless. Well. I think considering how AI still can't figure out how many fingers humans have. <laughs> we have a ways to go. It so. might be useful for just a little bit while longer. Uh -huh. Yeah. It is really bad at teeth, too. Oh, yeah. oh really? Um, <laughs> really bad at teeth, I've seen too. some incredibly entertaining AI art, and then and, and you'd like, okay, like, it doesn't understand how many limbs people have or how they are attached. <laughs> oh, yep. Wow. Yep. Um, and you think not at all. AI will be for premium at the moment, so we're good for the moment. No. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They uh, Luckily, they are um, 
stopping us from ha all from having it. <laughs> uh, but my answer, I said maybe. Uh, but I tell you what, I tried to play around with it a little bit. I think we're safe for now. Um, <laughs> just a little. All, all I tried to do in this AI query, and we can play around with this for a minute here, is <laughs> I said issues with assignees that have been created in the last 30 days. And for some reason, I thought this was so relevant because it tried to use the members of for a group that didn't even exist on the site I was using. Nice. All right. Just so, playing 40 chess over here. <laughs> I'm coming into work tomorrow. <laughs> this is what all of you guys are going to be writing after uh, walking away from this JQL presentation here. Be like, I need to use the members of no yeah. matter what. <laughs> so we're just like the AI now. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, let's see. Uh, we've got a couple minutes here. So why don't we jump over and say, all right, let's see how this AI tool works. Does anybody have a, a JQL that they would like to see how the AI deals with? Everything created and updated since yesterday. All right, everything... Created and updated since Created yesterday. Updated? I don't know. Oh, yeah, or. I don't want to hold let's, it out too much, but still. Let's see how it does. Oh, maybe if I click the AI. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like, this is a really weird query. <laughs> Okay. Anything that was updated as of the start of the day yesterday, right? Yeah. So that looks correct. Yeah, I mean, I missed Pretty the created cool. part, but it had the update. So I if, if, yeah, I, I'm fairly certain that updated would include created. So you don't necessarily need that. Mm, that's fair. I, I found, though, that with building the queries, the problem is always the thing that the people leave out because they kind of start from the underlying assumption. Like, I always start my queries with project equals, mm -hmm. but if I'm just asking somebody, they're going to forget to tell me that parameter. Yep. Mm -hmm. they, yep. they assume that you are in the same context they are in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or they say, I want to see all the open issues. Well, of course, unless you're using something very basic for a status, open could mean a lot of different things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, very true. The users are their own worst enemy. <laughs> I think that's that's why I'm pulling away from that. <laughs> well, you know, that's why they're paying me the medium-sized books. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think our JQL jobs are safe for now. <laughs> it took you two days to figure it out. It took you a few seconds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's been developed and trained for years. So you can take some solace in that, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> All right. Lots of places to steal from. <laughs> yes. <sighs> now, we've leveled up. We've gained some experience. What can I do with this? Well, some pretty wild stuff. So take a look at this filter that I built. Um, this filter actually takes everything we just talked about into account for one single thing. Okay. Um, it's not very useful, I'll be honest, but it would return some issues potentially. Um, so I'm using a filter that is all development issues. Um, that could be really anything, likely stories and bugs. Oh, wait, you probably don't need that. Let's say these development issues are a project of development problems. And then if it's a bug or a story, and we see we use the parentheses there, and the status has ever been in progress before or resolved has changed, right? So this is either if something has ever been in the status in progress or a resolution has been added to it. And the assignee is in the member is or was in a member of a developer's group at one point 
or the description is has okay, developed. Yeah. Um, so you can see how all of these things might start to come together, even though this one is a, is a bit of a mess. Um, because I really didn't have any queries on hand that made any sense uh, to build out like this. So if you do end up with the filter that looks something like this, please feel free to send it to me. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, please seek help. Yes. <laughs> I, I will respond with a therapist's phone number. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, go make some filters for your filters. So that's definitely one of the things you can go off and do. Mm -hmm. You don't understand how much time this can save me. <laughs> Um, dashboards, right? So one thing is searching for issues that you want to find. Another thing is building more complex reports, making sure that you're getting the data uh, in a way that is exactly how you need to see it, or rather how somebody else might need to see it. <laughs> and then also automation. Um, I wish we had a little bit more time here at the end, but Building out JQL with automation definitely comes in handy. You're avoiding your automation limits. It's going to be a lot more performant. Um, I've noticed that when you're building automations, those precious seconds that you're using to run through uh, a few thousand JQL issues can definitely be a problem. Um, so it definitely helps. And then like uh, was mentioned earlier about pinpointing uh, more detailed information, if you're using smart values inside of your your automations with your JQL to slim it down, you can really start building out some, some stuff that's pretty powerful. Um, so I did want to leave a little bit of room here at the end to do a little mini JQL workshop. I know we've got a lot of brains in the room. Um, I know that Sam is even more skilled than I am at JQL. So if there's any JQL issues that you have that you're thinking, you know what? I wonder if one of these people can help me. Feel free to drop it in the chat or ask about it here. No, I'm sorry. We cannot help you with your x-ray problem. Uh, I've tried. There was a support ticket and everything. Uh, <laughs> from whom? With, with x-ray. Well, who put in the support ticket? Me. Oh, you did. No, okay, yeah. I'm following you now. Okay. <laughs> so, who else had this question? How I want to know how they got around it. Well, they did. I found that yeah. out now. Yeah, there are x-ray reports that we're building. Mm -hmm. We can talk about that later, though. So Okay, so when we did the K-Ray thing on Kali Conference Day, I don't know if you're in here. Mm -mm. Okay. Cody had doing a dashboard. It had four different things report out, sort of like your previous slide, two, three. And I was trying to do them. I couldn't get to work. I asked him, shoot me the links. Well, they were gone. He was going to recreate them, and it's been a couple months. Oh, okay. So <clears throat> that's something I was going to ask you about after this. Yeah. But Or, you know, we can talk at a later time. But it's like I – and it's been about a month since I've tried to play with them and, I, and haven't gotten back to it because, like, I could see that being useful for me. Yeah. And that we can definitely sit down and take a look. Yeah. Or it'll look there, a lot like these. I mean, now you might have the the power to build them yourself. I'm we're definitely gonna do a filter and filter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the members of <sighs> okay. Awesome. That was that was the, those were the two things I was hoping to come away with tonight and send here. Hey. Oh, 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 for two. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 my third pitch. <laughs> you better ring me up. Mm, too funny. Okay. No, I kind of expected the first one to be I, x ray. I, I did have a couple of questions about the the functions, but I think maybe that's like advanced, advanced JQL. <laughs> what kind of functions? I might know a little something. Well, I've been seeing some of them, and I haven't used a lot of them, but like, you know, things will be like current sprint, future sprint, there are date functions, mm -hmm. and I haven't really had a chance to sort of dive into how to utilize those. Yeah, and that's something that I wish I would have at least included some links to or something. Um, I didn't, but what I can tell you is if you just search JQL functions, it'll take you right to them. 
Um, and there's a full list of things that you can use. The day ones that you mentioned, you know, those are great ones to use because you have like the a now function that is like the current time, so you can compare it. Um, like for due dates and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you, so you could just say if due date is greater than or less than now. If due date is less than now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are recording, and I'm sure that's backwards. Um, and if it's wrong, just flip it. <laughs> uh, so you can just check due dates if they're passed already and stuff like that. And then you have a whole slew of other functions too, like um, approver functions. So you can check, um, like get a group of users that might be approvers, mm -hmm. so that you can use that to check your fields. So, um, do you have any specific questions? I, no, just mostly that I've not been very successful at utilizing them to this point, but I've sort of been, I'm struggling a little bit with how they're doing things within our specific instantiation too, like the, the functions for like future sprint versus current sprint well when you have three sprints still open it kind of gets confused oh yeah <laughs> you know what often the users mm -hmm. are their own worst enemy <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've heard that <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have a, oh. no, go ahead we have a comment saw the other day someone using the Forward slash. I need glasses. Can't you just read it? It's not on there. Oh. Um, the forward slash? Yeah. The backslash. She, oh, the backslash. Back. Okay. Use the backslash backslash to be specific search on texts of either summary or description fields. Um, do you have a, an example of what you mean? Like just in front of the word? Because I've actually never seen that before. I could see using the backslash if you wanted to like escape uh, oh. a, a, a special character or something. Like if you wanted to search for quotes in a field, you couldn't put that in jQuery unless you escape it, right? Uh, oh yeah. yeah. So yeah. is that what you're referring to? Well, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to think about that one. That's not so, not something I use. And I guess not something I needed to yet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cool. Anything else, anybody? Very cool. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining in. Um, we have another event coming up. I, I'm going to know oh, yeah, I can, on the date. 29th, 30th? Yeah, I, I can speak to 30th. that. 30th. So, 30th. May 30th at 6 o'clock, we're going to have Jordan Newman um, come in. He works for Atlassian, and he does a lot of work for large um, enterprises, large corporations on how to automate as much as the, of the functionality as you can at scale. So he's going to come in and do a talk about automation, and so that will be beneficial to pretty much everyone here because automation is available in both cloud and data center. Um, then right after that, we're going to have an event on June 12th. That's going to be a co-hosted event with the chapter in Salt Lake City. And basically, the focus there is going to be how you can keep up and be in the know with all the changes that are coming to Atlassian Cloud. So and that one's going to be a slightly different time, I think. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that. So that co-hosted event on June 12th, that's actually going to be at noon Eastern time. So 6 o'clock in the evening for Whale, if you, if you want to join us. <laughs> Um, and you're not happy to be sleeping by that point. I don't know if you're a night owl, buddy. Um, so that's going to be our next event in June. And then I think that's all we have planned out right now. Um, we'll go live with those events here shortly. We're just waiting to get some details. And then that'll take us through the first half of this year. And we've got some exciting things planned for the latter half of this year, too. So, And because this is a community chapter, um, if anybody online you know, has any topics that you'd like us to cover in greater depth, you know, please email us, let us know, and, you know, join our group online if you haven't already, and then you'll get notified of any future updates that come, that come by. 
Awesome. Well, awesome. thank you, everybody, and thanks for coming. Enjoy. Great job, Tyler. Thanks, thanks Will. Thanks, boy. Shannon already left. She